Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a video response to a question I got asked earlier. I had posted on my channel how to use XLOOKUP and the LOOKUP function to find the last non blank cell, value in the last non blank cell. So, for example, 24, 26, 33. Someone asked, you know, how he could find the second last non blank cell, second to the last meaning from the right, the second, okay? So in this case, 35, 41, you know, like the results you see here, okay? So there are a couple of approaches. I mean, you can't even exhaust all of them, but I'm just going to show you one or two. Um, the fundamental concepts are the same. You might see some variations here and there, but I think foundationally they are similar. Um, so let me start off. Okay, so first thing I'll do is to find a way to discriminate between blank cells and non-blank cells okay so simple i just do I test all of this you know and i just check is it not blank okay right so you know what this is going to give me let me do control a and f9 okay so trues wherever they are not blank and false where it's blank okay simple enough right but now we have another problem because now we've been able to distinguish between blanks and non-blanks. But within the non-blanks themselves, they are all true, true, true. So we really can't tell them apart. So what you can do is kind of introduce, you know, a sequence in there. Something that can take into cognizance the columns where you have the true. And maybe it introduces one in for column one, two for column two, four for column four, stuff like that. So what I will do here is I will introduce the sequence function. I can use the column. You know function for it too but since i'm using office 365 i just go the sequence route okay so what i'm just trying to do really is just to create a sequence of you know one two three four up to the number of uh you know cells that i have in there so i can use a count a i could have had coded this but well i like to keep this dynamic okay right so the count a here is just going to return seven that's correct right so this will be sequence of seven but one thing you need to note here is that this is going to be in the rows and you actually want this to spill you know really from left to right okay so i'm going to put a comma for the rows argument so this becomes the columns argument okay so now let me evaluate this portion so everyone can see so you see we just have one two three four five six seven okay and don't forget what we had in here we had true false true false where the trues will become one, the false will be zero. So it means that wherever we have a false, that's wherever it's blank, we'll have a zero ultimately. Wherever it's a true, we'll have the column number. Now the column number is within the range that we've chosen. So what I mean is that uh, for any one in column B, it's going to be one, right? I know B is the second column, but based on the data range we have here, B is going to be column one. So let's just press enter so we see this. Okay, so you see what happens. You see that sequence of one to seven, but wherever you have a blank, you have zero. So it means if I change this to zero, for example, or a blank rather, it's going to become zero, right? But my sequence is still there. Okay, so now that you have this, and that's the beautiful thing about, you know, dynamic arrays and the spill, you can see what's going on. So if I need the last non-blank, I really just need the largest number here because the largest number here, 7, corresponds to the last non-blank. The second largest number corresponds to the second, you know, last non-blank um, you know, cell that I'm interested in. So really what this means is that if I just do large, you know, of 2, that would tell me the column that I'm interested in. Okay? And once I have that, I can use an index. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it to this cell. This cell will be what I will use to control whether I want the largest, last blank, or second to the last, or third, you know, and all that. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to introduce a large function. So I'm going to do large, right? And then at the end of this, I'm going to just point to this cell. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Yes. So let's go. Yeah, expectedly. So let's do large of one. Okay, so that's telling me it's in column seven, large of two, it's column six. So once you have this, you can just put an index around this. Okay, index, and then right. Don't bother about my uh, ranges today. Okay, so and then take this down. Right, so you can see second to the last 35, 41, 47, 33. And you know this works okay so this is one way to solve it I'm going to do it in another way using the filter function then I'll then show you maybe one or two challenges that you have 
with either method. Okay, so let me go to the second one. Here I'm going to use a filter and the logic is really simple. I'm going to filter out so that I can extract, you know, the non-blank cells. Then from there, I can then, you know, get creative to extract, you know, the entry I'm really interested in. So I'm going to start with the filter. I'm going to filter. This is going to be my range. Uh, some people are finicky, so maybe we just put some dollars in there for them. I might include arrays. I want to see everything here that is not blank. So what it means is going to extract, it's only going to extract those that are not blank. So you can see that from 11, 12, it jumps to 30, it skips the blank. So this essentially is really what I need, right? Okay. So, but now the question is, how do I get maybe the last, the one before the last? As you can see, it doesn't return seven entries, of course, because there's a blank, it returns six. So from the six, if I take the sixth one, you know, the sixth one here would give me the last non-blank. The fifth one would give me, you know, the second to the last, which is more or less like second when counting from the right. Okay. So what it means is that if I put a count A, count A tells me that there are six because count A can look into this range and say that, oh, okay, yeah, there will be six entries that will be produced. And then from there, I can now say, okay, use an index function, then I can manipulate it to give me what I want. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to put an index function here. Yeah? That's not the difficult part. Okay. I'm going to skip the row argument. In this case, I know it's one row, so I can put one. Now, the column argument. First of all, let me bring a count A. So, count A will tell me how many entries, you know, I mean, that will be returned by the filter, right? So, in this case now, the count A is going to give me six because there are six non-blank entries. Okay. Good. So, if I need the one, you know, the last one, it means I just go with, you know, six. Okay. If I need the second to the last, it means I go with five. You know, but now the funny thing here is that it doesn't work like the large, where, you know, if you need the second from the right, you use large of two. This one has a minus one there and it's kind of messing with your head. So what this really should be is that if you want to deal with, you know, the second from the right, you are doing something like minus two plus one, you know, just based on the way it's working. Okay. Where these two would be, you know, whatever you're looking for, whether you're looking for, you know, the second uh, or the first. If you are dealing with the first now, of course, this becomes minus one plus one. And this is zero. So essentially, it just gives you six, which is the last entry you have. You know, it's a little messy, but um, you kind of figure it out. So what I'm going to do is that instead of hard coding these two here, I'm going to point to, you know, the cell that has my um, you know, instance. Okay. So that's just what I'm going to do. Here. Let me try and fix that. Uh, so here, let's change this to two. Let's see, okay. So you can see. Uh, so I'm doing something wrong here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Count a. Oh, yeah. This this was wrong. The range here should not be absolute. Okay. Didn't catch that at first. Okay. So let's go down. All right. So that's fine. Okay. So good. So we have exactly you know the same thing. Okay. So. It seems like everything is fine until maybe you change this now to three. So I'm trying to say, okay, give me the third last non-blank cell from the right. Okay. All right. So now see what happens. Now you're having something interesting because on this row, we have only two non-blank entries. Now you've said three. So this is what happens really. It gets a little interesting. So what's going to happen here now? What's going to be my count A? My count A is going to count how many non-blank entries I have, which is going to be 2. Okay. Then 2 minus 3. That's minus 1. Then plus 1 is 0. Okay. So essentially, let me do this so everybody can see it. So press F9. Now you get 0. And 0 is an interesting, you know, argument in the index because what 0 means is return every column. That's what the index, you know, interprets 0 to mean, right? Because there's no 0 column, technically. It's only one, two, three, and so on. So when you put zero, it's going to return all the columns. So now you see it's returning 47 and 33, which is not what I want. So for this one, I could probably put, you know, maybe, maybe like an if, you know, I could just come up here, maybe and do an if. I say if count A. So I kind of count, you know, maybe how many entries I have here. Okay. So I'll say if count A is maybe less than, you know, whatever the person selected here, because that's the case that will give us a problem. If it's less than whatever the person has selected, maybe put a blank, 
if not you know give me the index something like that let's see if that fixes it okay uh so yep so now you see that wherever you have an entry um you know that is larger than the number of you know items you have so if you choose three and you only have two you know that's going to give you a blank and you know, this kind of fixes it you will still need to also do something similar you know to fix for this first method okay for this third method i'm going to use the if function okay and then couple it with the large I typically don't use the if function but i'm going to use it here maybe just you know to show another approach but at the end of the day you still need to bring in maybe like the if error to fix the problem so let's go with if so i start with if and say if this right is equals to blank for example i can start with that if it's blank i want it to be blank you know, i really would just want to mess things up because the way i'm having a challenge is the way i did it initially you know i would have zeros wherever i have blanks and zero still means something to the index okay but you know this wouldn't mean anything so if it's blank give me blank if not i'll create you know either using my sequence or using you know the column function anyone i could do my sequence too okay so i just do sequence you know i'm just doing a sequence to uh to get one to seven don't forget that this is supposed to be in the columns okay right so let's see what this looks like so you see what this gives you one two rather than giving you zero like we had the first time it's giving us a blank okay so we have this so now that we have this we could put the large around it same way like we started so large then what do you need if you need the second to the last you know you you pick two from you know that cell here but i'm going to maybe lock this first of all okay so let's see yeah we'll have some problems which is expected so now let's do two Okay, so this is giving us the position of, you know, the second to the last non-blank. More or less like the second non-blank counting from the right. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this into an index function. So index, and I select, right, and then that's, I need a row and then column. Okay, so that's that. Okay, good. So now... This still gives us the same thing. So let's see what happens when we choose an entry that is greater than the number of items we have. So three. So now we have some number errors whenever we choose a number that you know is greater than the number of entries on that row. And that's good because it's now obvious that we just need to put an if error. So we just put if error and say if it's an error, then you know, blank. Something like that. Okay. And then we take this down. Okay. So this is third non-blank from the right 21 this one is 46 this one doesn't have right this one is 1 2 3 43 this one doesn't have this one has 38 okay and you know this works so you could either go the approach of um, you know using the e function to cater for it you could also play around with you know what i've done in here and then use the if error to handle um you know the number errors that you know come up but anyway, you are just looking for a way to distinguish one between the blanks and non-blanks. And also when an entry is provided that, you know, obviously doesn't have an answer, you don't want it to return one of the figures. They want it to return, you know, a blank to show that there isn't a third you know, entry. And that's how you solve it. I promise to try and explain. I hope I succeeded in explaining. It could get a little, you know, complicated in some parts. But if you kind of follow the logic, you know, you kind of see what's going on. Beautiful thing, you can always watch it over and over and slow it down and you get it. Like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel. Excel Moments. For now, I'm out of here.